this uh, hospital and research institute for helping us uh, bring him here. He is bringing with him 15 other scientists, include, including his longtime research associate, Dr. Margaret Warner. So please help me give a very warm Texas welcome to Dr. Gustafson. Dear Governor Perry, dear President Couture, honorable guests and colleagues, thank you very much for this fantastic welcome. It is an enormous honor to be here and to be part of the team receiving this ETF grant from the Governor. My team and I are very happy to be in Houston and be given this fantastic opportunity to develop our research. A few words about what we are doing. We are working on nuclear receptors. And uh, what is that? Well, they are important control elements, or policemen, if you wish, in controlling how genes operate in the nucleus. The genes constitute, if you wish, the, the brain of the cell. And it's extremely important for how the cell works in health and disease. And these policemen, the nuclear receptors, by themselves are, can be regarded as locks which need keys to uh, function. So the keys who regulate the activity of the gene policemen, those keys can be hormones, for instance, estrogens, female sex hormones, which obviously are extremely important for normal life. But they can also be nutrients, for instance, fatty acids, which are, of course, important parts of our diet. And uh, all of these components can, in this way, affect the way the brain of the cell, the nucleus, works. So that is just to emphasize what key instruments that we are studying. So they are important in health as well as in disease, because many diseases are uh, associated with malfunctioning receptors. And this also explains why the nuclear receptors are so important for drug development. We hear a lot about uh, the hopes that the governor has so well expressed, and also President Katur, how important it is with commercial development. Well, few things could fit better than these nuclear receptors, the locks. Because what you do is, if you are skillful and use the opportunities, you can use chemicals as synthetic keys to affect these locks of the policemen, to affect their activity. And in that way, you can sometimes cure diseases or you could at least make the patients better. And just to show to you that this is true, 20% of existing drugs today are actually drugs which affect as keys these nuclear receptors. And it's a vast area for further uh, development, the expanding commercial uh, field. President Katur has opened up a health initiative at University of Houston. And our new Center for Nuclear Receptors and Cell Signaling is an important part of this initiative. And I can see fantastic opportunities in tying together technological research with life sciences. Often new ideas and breakthroughs occur at the borders of scientific disciplines. It's when they come together in the border zone that you can have new breakthroughs, new ideas, and you can advance the field. And of course, there is the nearby Texas Medical Center, which opens up multiple opportunities for translational research, that is to translate the research you do in your basic lab to what is good for the patients. And this is the direction where much of medical research of today is heading. Incidentally, there is only one way to take your uh, achievements in the lab to the bed of the sick patient, 
and that's through commercialization. Otherwise, you will never be able to do it. So you could really say that the health initiative necessitates a sound commercial development. Now, obviously, in the middle of this, and extremely fitting, we have this emerging technology grant, which the governor uh, has so generously given to us. It's extremely important in this whole process that I tried to visualize a little bit. And this is a very important partnership with a Methodist hospital. And uh, many of their key elements in this process are here today. Ron Grotto, Mike Lieberman standing here at my side, John Baxter, my long-term friend, Willa Sue. I should also not forget to mention in the UH team, many people, President Gatour and also her associate Don Burks. I want to especially mention John Baxter, who's, John Baxter who sits here in the front row. We have collaborated since several decades. He's a fantastic uh, medical person who set up many companies. I think he's one of the most successful, if not the most successful, uh, biotech person who's taken sort of the results from the lab to the sick patient. Actually, we set up a company together in 1987 at the Karolinska Institute called Carobio. It's an abbreviation of Karolinska Biotechnology. And it is still uh, doing quite well. So you could see here again a fantastic combination of basic science and clinical science and commercialization. And this partnership with Methodists, which is being catalyzed here by uh, the governor's ETF fund, is definitely extremely important. So as we uh, start, we are now bringing over, uh, as a start, we are now bringing over a large part, approximately, as we heard President Katur say, 15 scientists from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. About five of us are already here since a couple of weeks and the remaining group will come in the next few weeks into the fantastic labs that have been offered to us by President Katur and her team. And this, however, is only the beginning. This is the crystal, the nucleus, which will serve as a building block for our center. And we will vigorously start to recruit new faculty in the months to come. My goal or our goal, is to have a sizable center in place within one to two years, and I think that can be done. I would like to finish off with something which actually the governor himself encouraged me to think about when we met outside this room. An important theme for our center will be cancer research, as also emphasized by President Katur. And I know, Mr. Governor, that you have a special interest. And I know, as you already mentioned, that you visited the Karolinska Institute, where there is some good cancer research going on. So perhaps, if you think it might be a good idea, a vision might be to build a research bridge between cancer research in Houston and Stockholm, especially the Karolinska Institute. I could see many complementary interests upon which perhaps a vision like Houston and Stockholm, the twin cities for cancer research, could be built. Thank you very much. Since I called Professor Gustafsson an academic quarterback, we can't let him go without the proper attire. So we have, Mr. Governor, if you can also please come forward. Oh, fantastic. We have. our esteemed chair of the Board of Regents, Honorable Mr. Welcome W. Wilson, Sr. <laughs> 